Hey guys, welcome to Musky Road Road Podcast, episode number 270. Guys, 270 of these things. It's uh, pretty crazy. And tonight's podcast is brought to you by, well, we might as well do Musky Max. It's starting this weekend up in uh, PA. It gets going on Saturday at 9 a.m. Uh, I know guys up there are pretty excited. Go to Musky. M U S K I E Max dot com to see all the details on location. We actually have a new location this year for the event, so yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, all the cool stuff that's uh, uh, you know that's going to be happening here uh, really soon this weekend. I know it's always super crazy that first morning of Musky Max. When everybody uh, is trying to get in and everybody's looking around and uh, stuff, it's pretty nuts those first four or five hours. So check it out, muskymax.com. And uh, yeah, I think you're going to, uh, I think you're going to like it if you're in the area. Guys, also, I want you to text us on our text line at the Lunge and Lures text line at 606 776 6570. Shoot us a text. Let us know what you're thinking. Let us know what you want to hear. And uh, yeah, hopefully we can bring it to you. Lunge and Lures, lungeandlures.com. Uh, makers of the 22 short, 22 long, 22 SS, the Chubby. Uh, also, some of the Alley Cat series of baits. Uh, they have a ton of stuff there. Check them out at lungeandlures.com. And I don't think you're gonna be uh, you're gonna be disappointed. Well, guys, I am absolutely exhausted. I just got back to Kentucky. I'm sitting on the houseboat right now, and uh, yeah, I drove back from the Northwest Angle yesterday um, or last night. I drove 22 hours straight um, by myself. And, uh, that was a long drive. That's my longest one so far. I've done, I'd done 19 one time, uh, by myself to Leech Lake, um, uh, from Kentucky, but, uh, the 22 hours nonstop, um, overnight was, uh, yeah, a lot of coffee drank a lot of those Celsius's also my left arm was going numb, which I'm assuming is a slight heart attack. Um, but I did find out that uh, you should space out those Celsius's and drink a little bit of water um, when you're doing that. But it was a long drive, but I'm back in Kentucky. Uh, I went from 13 below to about 40 above, so big temperature change. We had snow up there about six inches on the ground. Uh, I think we're supposed to get another five to six this weekend. Uh, and down here, it's really, really nice. There's fish being caught. Um, I know I've been watching and talking to some guys. I have not got on the water yet. I'm going to be getting on here really, really soon. And, uh, yeah, I'm looking, uh, I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a really, uh, fun start to the season, uh, down here with this warm weather on the phone guys. Right now we got Brian Clark from big PA musky up in Pennsylvania. He's going to be at the, uh, musky max this weekend. Brian, how are we doing? Doing real good. Good, good. What's, uh, you looking forward to the musky max this weekend? Oh yeah. It's, uh, one of my favorite shows, you know, the PA crowd really comes out in full force and, uh, they like to buy. So, uh, been all hands on deck up at the shop, getting baits ready, getting the guide service stuff all put together. So ready to rock and roll in, uh, this weekend. Yeah, no, I think it's going to be, uh, I think it's going to be really, really good. I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to it. Um, the, the show now is in a new location where, can you give guys an idea of where it's at? Yeah, it's called, uh, I believe it's called the Washington, um, Oh God, it's, it's, it's a mall complex. What is it called? Washington crown center, I believe. Yep. And, uh, yeah, you know, I, I just looked at the floor layout the other day and, you know, I was a little confused on how they were going to do it. You know, was it just going to be like an old shopping mall where all the vendors are set up in a long hallway or, you know, a big room. And it looks like it's going to be a, a pretty sweet little setup there. So I'm excited to uh, check the place out and, and see what it's all about yeah no it looks uh it looks really good i think it's going to be a a nice event and uh hopefully have a lot of uh uh have a lot of people show up for the for the show i'm i'm really looking uh you know looking forward to it what Mm -hmm. um for you there what are you going to be showing um so (laughs) 
I will have one of the most complex booths at that show. Not only am I going to be like promoting my guide service uh, in Pennsylvania and in New York, but I'll uh, I'll have some crankbaits there, the Wander Shad, the big ass Wander Shad, and new to uh, last year <clears throat> was the uh, big lip Wander Shad. And basically, what I did is combine the two baits into one, and um, took it to the shows last year. Sold a couple. But the guys who did get them, you know, they did really well on those baits. And I was really excited to see um, all the pictures that came in of those. So I'm going to have the crankbaits there. And then I'm going to have a lot of baits from uh, GoTo Baits there. I've been pouring some hybrids over the last couple weeks getting ready for the show. And, uh, yeah, i got a whole assortment of Pennsylvania, New York, uh, colors ready to rock for the guys there. A lot of St. Clair guys go to that show as well. So I got... Of course, all the St. Clair staples in the uh, in the arsenal. So, gonna have a busy booth and tooth tamer rods. I have um, about a dozen tooth tamer rods uh, from Bill Green out in Wisconsin. So, I know they have a good following out that way, and I know a lot of the uh, Pennsylvania crowd they do like the tooth tamers, and they're always wondering how to get them. So, if you're interested in those, I will have them at my booth as well. All right. Well, good, uh, good deal. Now, Brian, you do some, uh, you do quite a bit of guiding up there. What, how does your, how was your season last year? I've had a lot of guys on and talked about them, but how was your season kind of out East, um, the 20, you know, the 2023 season? (laughs) In a nutshell, it was pretty, pretty bad. Um, that's good. (laughs) Right. Yeah. You know, we were spoiled for so long. Um, on Pima Tuning, Chautauqua, even a little pond in my backyard called Edinburgh Lake. Um, I was I was spoiled for so long with just stupid numbers of fish. Um, numbers were down last year, a, a mix of reasons why. Mostly, you know, for the Pima Tuning pre-spawn bite, you know, we just didn't have the weather. We didn't have the weeds. We didn't have, you know, the color we looked for. Just nothing really panned out. Um, so I did a lot of hopping around to different lakes, trying to find a good bite here and there. And it just, it was just a pretty crappy spring in general. Um, but then I had a little baby born in May, so I took a couple weeks off there and then, uh, <laughs> well, that's probably pretty good. Uh, yeah. I, I needed that after the shitty spring that I had. So, um, <laughs> that was fun, you know, being home with a newborn and then, uh, yeah, June one, I headed up to Chautauqua, had a pretty good, uh, June, pretty good july and then late in the year man it it got really tough where normally i i fish up on chautauqua until like november one typically unless it's still firing good then i you know finish out the season up there but i was back in pa guiding by mid-september i'd kind of given up on chautauqua at that point it was just you know (laughs) lots and lots of big fish follows but the water was clear the weeds were shitty it's just i was i was just done fighting it so came back to pa salvaged a couple you know good days in Pennsylvania, but nothing like what it was in the past. We're really hoping that this year is going to, uh, get back to normal. Sure. I, uh, I get that. I had heard that it was a pretty tough bite up there this year and guys were, guys were definitely struggling, uh, to get fish in the boat and everything. What, I mean, has it been, you know, uh, I mean, was there just, you, you were talking about clear water. Is that just something you're not used to having up there? No, it's, it's pretty normal, but normally you got a lot of, you know, really thick, especially like in September, you get some really thick, uh, cabbage weed beds. And, you know, when you have, I guess like eight foot sand flats that aren't normally, they're normally lush weed beds combined with that crystal clear water. Now Chautauqua has, um, one of the worst boat side action bites of all time. Like, you know, I do a fair bit of traveling, musky fishing and nowhere is harder to get a fish to eat on the figure eight than Chautauqua. And so, you know, when you're not pulling them out of the weeds and, you know, they're actually seeing a bait coming for a long ways off, they're more likely to follow. And that was just, I, in my theory, what was going on while we were, you know, contacting and seeing eight to 10 fish a day, but getting one bite if we were, you know, (laughs) more or less doing well. So the numbers, you know, we were seeing good ones. We were seeing a decent amount of them. Just how many times can you watch eight fish a day come right up to the boat and, you know, bail before you say, all right, we got to do something different, go somewhere else. Um, so, yeah, hoping this year that we get some uh, some denser, thicker weeds that will hopefully, you know, coax those fish into biting. <laughs> sure, sure. No, I uh, 
Uh, I get that, man. I understand how that goes. What was, uh, so last year for you, what was kind of your, your go-to baits and stuff, say early in the year? Um, are you talking springtime in Pima tuning or yeah. I moved up to Chautauqua? Yeah. Let's do early spring Pima tuning. All right. Early spring Pima tuning. Um, that lake typically has one of the best, um, uh, short line trolling bites that I've ever heard of. Um, you know, I'm heading to Kincaid in a couple or yeah, next week. And so I know that place is known for a, a tremendous, you know, early season bite. Um, but yeah, Pima tuning, amazing short line trolling, uh, Top baits last year, uh, the Underboss by Bosch. Yeah, that that was a good one for me last year. Um, the Leo Lores, those Mojos, those do really well there. Um, and then you know those were probably my two best short line trolling baits. And then uh, casting, just a lot of small jerk baits and whatnot. A lot of Hellhounds, Phantoms, uh, a couple of Narcan bites. I remember. Um, couple days we had some warmer water we got fish moving and, and caught a few on the lt9s the bu- single bladed bucktails by lungeon um i'm trying to think it's almost a whole year ago and sure there's been a lot going on in my life trying to remember all the top baits of last year but yeah it was typically a, a jerk bait bite on the weed beds and then you know trolling shorelines uh the underboss was a was a hit last year the uh, underboss what uh, is uh what is that um, I'm not, I'm not real familiar with that one. Um, it's, it's basically a five inch perch style bait with a round lip, uh, shallow diving. I'm trying to think of a good bait to compare it to. It's almost, it's, it's kind of like a similar shape to a five inch alley cat. Okay. Okay. So just imagine that profile. It's got a different, you know, round lip on the front of it. Um, it's got a pretty tight little wiggle to it and, uh, I've even caught several fish casting those baits, just twitching them and whatnot. But, uh, yeah, they're, uh, they're kind of like a little hidden gem that, uh, not too many people are used to using, you know, Paul's real most popular baits, that four and a half inch boss, but that under boss, uh, in my opinion is right up there with one of the top baits that I grab anywhere I go if they're eating smaller stuff. So, and it's a, it's a bait that probably you're, you're not getting a, it doesn't have a real steep dive curve to it. No, no. And, you know, most of the time we're trolling in like six, seven foot of water. And so I'm running anywhere from five to 20 foot back and not touching bottom, you know, depending on how deep I bury the rod tip. It's, uh, I would think the dive curve on that is something like maybe five to one. So you can maybe top it out at like 10 to 12. I would, I'm just ballpark guessing. I never really run them that far away from the boat, but, um, yeah, they're not, they're not steep at all. Sure. Sure. All right. Well, good, uh, good deal. So as the, as the spring kind of rolls on and you move into Chautauqua, what was, Mm -hmm. what did you see up there? Yeah. From the opener, we, uh, started out, had a pretty decent June. Most of our bites, uh, came on. (laughs) It was funny. You asked us, what were your go-to baits? Well, my go-to baits were the go-to baits. Nice. Uh, the hybrid up there, uh, pretty much dominated for us in June, Uh, threw in a couple diving rises. I got some, uh, some of the nine and seven inchers that, uh, Josh Marshall, Marshall tackle, he started making, uh, some diving rises last year and I gave him a whirl and really liked the action of those ones. Um, but yeah, the go-to baits, the hybrid, we started out the year with the, uh, the smallest version, um, paired those with, uh, some willow blades. If you're not familiar with a hybrid is it's, it's a two piece rubber bait with all sorts of accessories and interchangeable tails, skirts, features, and uh, we'll have them at the Musky Max to check them out. But, yeah, they're, uh, they're a very versatile bait. There's a million things you could do to them to mix them up. But, uh, yeah, those those baits have been my bread and butter for the last three years up on that lake. And, um, yeah, early in the season, the fish were a little higher in the water column. So, you know, we upsized the blade to keep it a little higher. Um, and as the season progressed, you know, we went to the medium size, uh, went to the Colorado blades, the number sixes, that gets a little bit deeper. You can work it a little bit faster. Um, and then, uh, I'm trying to think July was an okay trolling bite, but we were still mostly casting and yeah, it was, uh, I'm a pretty boring fisherman when it comes to bait selection. It was pretty much, uh, the hybrids and red October tubes all summer long. Oh, nice. All right. What's the, uh, it, it, you know, on Chautauqua up there, I mean, that water can vary depending on what end you're on, correct? 
Exactly. Yeah. That's the South half of the lake is going to, you know, depending on the calendar date that you go up there, you could be gin clear on the opener and, you know, come back five, six weeks later and it's going to be algae pea soup. And, um, you know, that's going to affect what lure colors you're using, the portions of the water column you're going to hit. It's going to be pretty dark, you know, down below eight, 10 foot, just no sunlight getting through all that algae. So there's a lot of different things we do. If I'm down on the south end, I'm mostly up on the north end being a caster. Uh, they, they treat the weeds real heavily on the south end. So for the most part on that lake, I'm chasing green weeds. Well, on the south end of the lake, too, you're looking at, what, a max depth of 20 feet? Yeah, about 18, 19, yeah, in yeah. a couple areas that are real small. real Yeah, real shallow, gradual shorelines. Yeah, that's what I remember out there. And the north end gets a lot deeper um right and it's a bigger a bigger basin uh right uh too so you know on on that lake you know let's talk did you fish how was the fall out there the fall um like i said i i pretty much did my last trip on chautauqua around september 20th and um you know i had a bunch of buddies and clients that were going up there and it sounded like the same thing happened throughout the entire fall where they were just seeing fish and not too many uh not too many biters, just a lot of follows. A couple big ones I heard being caught um, on the south end trolling. But, yeah, just uh, I gave up on it. I went back to Pennsylvania. <laughs> Much sure. shorter drive for me, and we were actually catching. So it was pretty nice. Yeah. And so in the, in the fall, were you doing um, uh, more of the pima tuning stuff? Yep, did pima tuning. And then, you know, our <clears throat> our natural lakes out here in Pennsylvania – um, are very similar to like the really small uh, kettle lakes out in Wisconsin. So I got within an hour drive of my house access to like eight or nine of those smaller lakes. And, um, you know, they're, they're just an easy place to go to guarantee your clients are going to get on top of fish. So I hit up a lot of those little natural lakes in Pennsylvania and a couple of the other reservoirs. Did a lot of bouncing around more or less. I would talk to the clients, you know, a couple of days ahead of time and pick their brain on where they wanted to go, what they wanted to accomplish. And that would just determine where we went. Sure. Well, yep. uh, a lot of 250, 300 acre lakes, real small ponds, yeah. more or less. How was the, um, how was the fall for you there in, in, in PA? Was there any kind of different pattern or special pattern that you got onto? Um, uh, not really. I'm pretty stubborn and I like to force feed my fish, uh, big rubber and it, it panned out well. We had, um, no giants this year, nothing that topped the 50 inch or, or the 50 inch range in Pennsylvania, but you know, lots of 45s, 47s, and you know, a couple of days where we reached five, six fish in a day, you know, nothing, nothing special, but you know, it was uh, a lot better than, than the ass whooping I took up in Chautauqua in September. So I was happy to uh, at least <laughs> regain a little confidence, you know. Sure. No, I uh, I get it. Um, what do you, you know, how do you see the state of the the Pennsylvania fishery right now, you know, being out there and, <laughs> and, and fishing quite a bit? I mean, um, does it look like, you know, it, it, are they, is it getting the stocking that it needs? Is, is you know, what are you seeing? Well, it, it took a long time. I think in 2017, we started stocking our 15-inch yearlings instead of the fingerlings. So we're now starting to see <clears throat> those fish reach like the 42, 44-inch range. So um, it, it's, it's getting better for size for sure. There's no doubt about that. Um, we do have a lot of red spot in our lakes, and we're always just kind of like nervous that, man, is this, is this lake going to get wiped out if we have the right conditions in the spring that are going to, you know, potentially wipe out an entire lake but no it's it's uh it's not bad it's it's definitely on the rise fish are getting definitely larger in here there is a way higher number of uh anglers out there so the fish are getting a little bit smarter you know you gotta pull out some old tricks and get a little goofy with your lure presentations and stuff like that to get them to go because they are seeing a lot more uh base for sure but no pennsylvania is definitely getting better um and it is, it's a shame that it waited till 2017 to get the yearlings rocking and rolling. But, uh, yeah, I was pretty, I was pretty lucky to have, um, they actually used Edinburgh Lake right in my backyard, uh, as one of the guinea pig lakes for the new stocking practices. And they had to do their own, uh, 10 year little study to see, you know, what the benefits are to stocking a 15 incher versus a six incher. Sure. And so for, 
10 years, they ran this study on Edinburgh and I was out there very, very often and just, you know, racking up, you know, 10, 12, 15 fish days. And, uh, that was a lot of fun. And then they backed off the stocking on there for a little bit. And, um, yeah, but it, it's good to see that they're actually trying new things and constantly trying to improve. I, I just recently heard that they're, uh, making some big moves in the future here in PA as well with new stocking, I think equipment and whatnot. So yeah, I think, uh, we're in good shape here in the future. Sure. I mean, it sounds like you guys, and you guys are getting some, uh, some size fish too out there too, which is, which is really nice. Right. Yeah. We have the waters to do it. Um, you know, whether it be in some of our glacial lakes that are real deep and, uh, some of our rivers, you know, like the Allegheny river, that's always known to put out a couple whales every year. Um, but yeah, if, and, that, and that's the beauty of where I live. If we want to go chase, you know, a 52, 53 incher, I got waters like that within an hour of my place. If we want to go out there and catch eight to 10 a day, not guaranteed, but, you know, have a chance at that. But I got that, you know, again, within, I got a couple of lakes that can produce that within an hour of my house. So it's a fun place to live. You know, I prefer chasing the big ones, but every now and again, it is fun to go out there and just, you know, stack up some numbers. Sure. No, it's, uh, it's always good to, <laughs> to catch, <laughs> have those kind of options, right. To catch fish. Um, what, uh, now for somebody that's just getting started there in PA and, and, and they want to get into musky fishing, what would you tell them, you know, maybe give them, you know, what, what would be some areas to try? And then also, uh, what would be, um, some lures or tactics they should uh, really look into? Right. Gotcha. Yeah. So, I mean, the easiest place, <laughs> The easiest way to learn quickly is to go to place with numbers. You know, it, it's rare that you're going to have lakes with numbers and size. But if you're going past 100 fish in a day versus going somewhere with 10 fish in a day, you're going to get better substantially quicker going to the numbers lakes. You know, you're going to have way more interactions. These fish are going to tell you how, you know, if you're doing things right or wrong. So, you know, a lot of our smaller lakes like Edinburgh and Canadota, LaBeouf, um, those are great places to learn. You know, you don't, <clears throat> you don't go there expecting to pop a 45 or whatever, but you know, there are a few in there. So guys new to the sport, I recommend, you know, do a little research, go online, look at your biologist report, see where, you know, the most number of fish are getting stocked and, you know, just having them trapped in such a small little lake ensures that you're going to get baits in front of fish. Sure. You know, if no, you go I... out to Pima... <laughs> no, yeah, I... if you go out to Pima tuning, that's 17,000 acres. You know, those fish swim a lot in that lake and they could be there one day and you come back four or five days later, they're not there, you know, and you think you're doing something wrong. Well, if you go to somewhere smaller, you're ensuring that you're putting your lures in front of fish. Um, and as far as baits that are, you know, maybe baits on a budget that you're going to be safe with, you know, um, there's a lot of $15, $20 baits out there that catch fish. Um, hellhounds for one, those are some of the easiest jerk baits in the world. Uh, it's a side to side type, uh, walk the dog subsurface glide bait. Um, you know, a lot of people don't throw them in the summer, but I've caught a lot of fish in 75, 76 degree water on hellhounds because that's what I started with. And I like, you know, basically taught myself how to make fish eat those baits all year long you know, with different speeds and counting down and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, hellhounds are great baits to get started with. Um, out this way, bucktails aren't what they are out West, you know, or up North. So instead of bucktails, I love spinner baits and my absolute favorite spinner bait are the Lungeon Nut Buster Juniors, uh, relatively cheap bait. I believe they're like 15, 16 bucks. And actually, you know, you're thinking to yourself, that's just an oversized bass spinner bait. You know, it's not going to catch a giant muskie. Well, the biggest muskie we've ever caught on Chautauqua came on one of those little things. So, you know, it's a, another bait that as long as water's above like 55 degrees, it's going to work. Um, another good trolling bait that is way overlooked are the super shad wraps. You know, on a budget, those are great baits. I've caught fish on super shad wraps in almost every body of water I've used them in. So, um Real good, easy baits. Everybody, you know, any bait shop for the most part is going to have them. And uh, for, yeah, out this way, you know, you don't need the pounders. You don't need the 13-inch baits. So 
you know, find out what your fish are eating in that lake and try and match the hatch as far as size goes, which out this way, it's mostly all panfish and shad. Sure. Yeah. That's what do you guys, uh, do you guys, I mean, do you guys get a bunch of ice on your lakes out there? <laughs> so I was thinking about this earlier today, <clears throat> this year, uh, I believe we had two days where people were actually out ice fishing which is crazy to think because I used to be big into ice fishing and go, you know, maybe 15, 20 times a year and I haven't gone in three years. So I don't know. <laughs> I'm half thinking about selling all my gear cause it hasn't gotten used in a couple of years. I regret putting the boat away. I should be, I should have been out there two days ago. <laughs> it's gorgeous. It was, I bet you our water's, you know, 38 degrees or so. And What, uh, um, now your guys' season, uh, it, it doesn't close, correct? In Pennsylvania, we have no close season. Chautauqua, we do. Uh, the opener now is June 1, and it closes December 1. Okay. You, know, you got you to protect those spawning fish on December 2. Yeah. <laughs> I... And you know what's cra- you know, the craziest rule about that is? So you can't target muskies in a boat on December 2nd but you could target them through the ice in March and February if there ever is ice. Oh, no shit. So it makes, makes sense of that. I, I don't get it. You could you can legally target them through the ice, but you can't target them out of a boat or from shore with rod and reel. I, I don't know. <laughs> ah, everything, uh, you know, <laughs> it's, a, it, it, it's weird when those rules, uh, you know, it, it makes you think sometimes when you hear some of the rules, you're like, well, that's that's not – that shouldn't be that way, but uh, yeah, right. <laughs> that's just the stuff you kind of you kind of see sometimes. It always makes me wonder what the hell people were thinking when they uh, when they made it. Yeah, yeah. So I uh, I totally understand what uh, a, mus- a musky flopping on the ice is a lot better than flopping around in the net. So. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> What is, uh, what, what can you, you know, coming up here at Muskie Max, um, I know you're going to have stuff there for sale in your booth. What, uh, is there any baits that you're looking forward to seeing or maybe picking up at the, at the show? Ooh, you know what? This year I've been more behaved than ever as far as lore buying goes, you know, I've even sold more, I've sold more lures this year than I've bought as far as new ones. Um, that I'm looking forward to, Ugh, I got a couple glides, um, from Marshad. Um, God, I forget the name. I think it's called the Kingpin. Uh, Polly of, uh, Boss Shad made a new, uh, Twitch bait. And so, uh, I got one of those and actually getting it wet the other day, uh, just in a local Creek. I'm thinking about getting a couple more. They look real sweet. They're kind of like a, uh, oh man what's a good comparison i guess they're they're like his eight inch minnow but the back inch is cut off and a big grub tail but he weighted that thing down so much that it is just like essentially one of the slowest rising dive and rise kind of crank baits out there it's it's just like a a two-in-one kind of bait that i I just know is going to crash for me this year so i might pick up a couple more of those at the uh at the musky max um Man, kind of caught me off with that one. I, I guess it's one of those things. Once I get there and take a loop or whatever, I'll see what uh, catches my eye. Yeah, I think I I'm gonna like pull the trigger. I've been seeing some of those bam bam baits. I might try to pick up a couple of those. Um, a bam bam bait? What's what are those? It's uh it's like a twin tail, um, soft plastic. It's got the long double tail on it. Um, uh huh. I know some guys, some buddies of mine in Wisconsin last year did really good on them. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it just looks like a kind of a cool, the rubber's just a little bit, uh, more durable, uh, I think. So, oh, is it like a long toad, like a real skinny toad type thing? Yes. I gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was going to pick up, uh, some of those at the show. I, I had seen them, but you know, a lot of times when you go to these little small knit shows like this, yeah, uh, you see a bunch of shit that you, you just don't, you don't know who they are. Right. You know, it's stuff. It's just guys that, you know, basement bait makers and stuff. And you go and you see what they got and you're like, Oh, I'll try that. I mean, you know, that's, you know, you kind of learn and, and see a bunch of different stuff and it's always nice 
because you you know that's how you get to uh you know you get to looking right and i love buying like little garage type beeps because uh you never know when you're just gonna find that next gem yeah you know that that bait that no fish has ever seen before and stuff like that so yeah i'd much rather purchase something like that than something that you know i know everybody else already has and stuff like that so yeah i'm Actually, uh, you got me a little intrigued. I kind of want to check them out now. Yeah, no, there's going to be some. Uh, there's going to be some cool stuff there, and it's going to be Saturday. Um, I think we go nine to six on Saturday. Um, I think that's right. Um, mm-hmm. And then we've got uh, no, it's nine to five Saturday and ten to three on Sunday. So it should be a, a pretty cool deal. I'm going to be giving a seminar there on Sunday. Um, looking forward to seeing everybody and, uh, yeah, hopefully, uh, um, hopefully it'll be a, a good time and, you know, it looks like the weather's going to be great. Right. If anything, yeah. are, they, we'll lose, are they doing the, we'll lose guys are to they fishing. Gonna do the, are they going to do the pro guide panel this year? Yeah, I think they are. It, it is scheduled to, uh, to do that. So I think it's, uh, yeah, no, I, I think that they're going to definitely be doing it. Um, but no, it should be a it should be a really good event, um, Brian. Real quick, and this is kind of what we'll end on here. What would be you know if someone is up there in PA and and they're wanting to get set up to maybe do um, some trolling this year? What would be kind of an easy setup for people to get into? As far as rods, reels, or- yeah, maybe just rods, reels, and even how they would set their boat up. Okay, yeah, um, there's going to be. Oh, a couple booths down there selling rods, but you know what, what I, with, for how little trolling I do and what size of baits and everything I use, I keep things very cheap, very easy. Um, you know, my down rods, for instance, are those ugly stick catfish rods and I've had them for seven years and broke one. And as long as you're not pulling anything, you know, more than like, uh, maybe like an eight, five matlock. I mean, is probably the biggest I would ever use on that, which is, you know, for Pennsylvania, that's everything you need. We're not using giant plows all the time. So, you know, I like, I like those because they're cheap. They don't break. They got enough flex in them. And, uh, I, you know, those are my down rod setups. Um, man, I couldn't even tell you what my other, uh, trolling ours, trolling rods are right now. Um, trolling reels i like the daiwa cold water series um they do great for me i use the four what are those the 401s daiwa or okuma oh the the cold waters okumas yeah yeah yep um the 401 d's i believe they are uh they're a great reel for trolling loud clickers uh good gear ratio rarely have issues with them get yourself a couple inline planer boards uh, those are a must in PA. Uh, even, you know, I don't know if anybody's selling them, but uh, those stern boards, um, a lot of our reservoir, reservoirs, dirty water, most of our bites come right next to that motor. So think about getting yourself a couple, you know, down easters, uh, some stern boards, some in, um, what are those, offshore inline planer boards. Does Crash's Landing sell those? I'm trying to think of who at the show would actually have um boards wise i don't know i don't know if matt will have any of those there or not um uh-huh. those stern boards though um that you can get off of uh their church's tackle that makes them um they're just really really nice i i like those boards a lot i've been using those more and more over the the last couple of years and i just find them really you know really nice yeah <laughs> you know what i use for my stern board i took some old uh iced tea water bottles basically and i filled them up with that spray foam insulation expandable shit sure (laughs) it just ran a little wire through it oh it looks redneck is all but uh it gets the job done you know i got some good planer board clips on that thing with a nipple so it can't slide totally off and that does the job for me because you could tell my trolling setups you know I don't do a ton of trolling, but when I do, it's on a budget. <laughs> sure. No, I, uh, I totally, uh, I totally get it. And, you know, I mean, it, it'll be cool. So, I mean, at the show, no matter if you're a cast or troll or whatever, there's going to be all kinds of, of booths there and stuff for you to come and see. 
Um, you know, for, for terminal tackle, you're going to have stealth tackle there as well. Um, they're going to be selling stuff. I think they've actually got some, uh, and I've seen that uh, Bomb Squad will be there, which is probably going to have some Phantoms too. So for guys that are fans of the Phantom Jerk Baits, that would be something to look at. Um, you know, there's just a ton of stuff I think you're going to be able to find there. Um, so make sure you guys definitely come out there this weekend and, and see. And I'm going to have a few rods for sale too. I've got a you know some eight foot. Um, they're Thorn Brothers. Uh, of uh, Thorn Brothers makes the Stealth series of rods. They're really nice, super light rods. If you're looking for a um, a nice, it's kind of a higher end rod. I'm going to be selling for a a decent little price, but uh, you know it's definitely going to be quite a bit off of the regular price. But uh, we'll have some of those, and there'll be all kinds of stuff there at the show. So, well, Brian, this is going to be kind of a short one tonight. I am exhausted. Um, <laughs> I honestly don't. I've slept three hours in the last 48. So uh, it's a wonder I haven't said something I'm going to regret on here. Right. Um, just because of that. But, uh, Brian, how could somebody get a hold of you if they can't make it to the show? How could they get a hold of you? If you can't make it to the show, uh, you can hop on Facebook, Instagram. I have accounts for Captain Chaos on both. Or you can check on my website, bigpamuskie.com. All right. Well, good deal. And, guys, also remember, um, I'm looking for videos. If anybody wants to uh, get some videos that we can get up on the Muskie Hunter social pages, I'd really love to get a hold of them. You can always email them to me at Battle the Beast, B A T T L E T H E B E A S T, at Gmail. Um, you can send them uh, through a Google Drive. If you send them to that email address through a Google Drive, um, I'll be able to get those. And uh, yeah, and uh, of course, everybody will get uh, you'll get links to whatever you want it linked to and everything. But uh, I'm just looking to to show more stuff out there to get guys interested and in, and in, in going on musky fishing. I know I got one of you yours, Brian, a a cool uh, actually 51 inch fish. You said, and it was it was that on a drone? No. So yeah, my buddy Rob, he the inventor of go to baits, one not very crafty guy and so he assembled a couple six foot poles um and, and mounted it where his stool is in the front of the boat sure and so he, he put the gopro up there and had all sorts of strings and stuff to aim it and whatnot so i believe it was about i can't remember it was 18 or 15 foot up but yeah we have the gopro set up so wherever he was casting you know he would just crank that pole to the side a little bit so yeah it was it was before drones got popular and whatnot but yeah it was a a giant fish and if you slow it down you can watch that 51 inch or uh eat it you know a foot below the surface pretty cool angle yeah no that'll be going up on the musky hunter uh facebook page here early next week and guys make sure you check out all the social media pages you can also check out mine um at you can check it out on musky hunter or battle the beast and uh yeah i'll be there too still got some trips ready uh you know for the spring that we can do and also on lake of the woods this summer um if you guys want to want to come out and uh yeah i encourage everybody to give a shot at lake of the woods it's a lot of fun so as of now though guys let's uh i'm gonna sign off here brian it was good to talk to you and uh, mm -hmm. i'll see you if i don't see it tomorrow i'll see you saturday yeah, you got another, what, seven-hour drive in front of you? Uh, it's only five. Shit, I can do that in my sleep. Oh. I might be. Nice. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I'll see you up there this weekend. All right, man. Sounds good. See you. Bye-bye.